think he's trying to break the hole there just to get to get some kind of daylight. And you wonder about the young people's strength, but as you saw there when he's just trying to break that hole, they're not able to do it. And then that just gives Walsh more control here. We know Coco's tough, too. We know he's strong, and he still can't get away. Under a minute to go here at 145 pounds. Taylor Walsh on top of Frank Croco. Yeah, he's away. Make that 6-2 now. So Croco on his feet and has a chance here to get a takedown maybe. Well, he's got to throw caution to the wind right now. Thirty-nine seconds left. Six two. Croco needs some serious work to get it done here. He needs four points and under forty seconds, Jack. It's not going to be easy. He needs to take down on some back points right now. And this isn't helping him. Easier said than done, though, you must admit. Oh yeah, especially against the talent levels of these young people. And the experience that both these young men have over the years. And again, Walsh doing a very good job of warding him off, Jack, keeping him away, not letting get him get in there and get a heel pick or maybe get a leg to get that takedown and possibly those back points. Well, he's, he's holding him at bay with those long arms, as you mentioned before, as the time is. Look at this. At the buzzer, they give two more to Taylor Walsh, and he wins at 100 and 45 pounds by a score of eight to two. So two champions are crowned, 12 more to go. We'll be back with more action from Boardwalk Hall right after this. New Jersey State High School Game of the Week. Bios One, bringing you the world outside your door. The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. A beautiful day for a stroll on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. The sun is shining, spring has sprung, and the lacrosse players are warming up, getting ready for the spring season, which officially started this weekend. Start on a Friday. New Jersey high school sports fans, you'll always score with Verizon 411. Your source for telephone numbers and more, fast and accurate. That's Verizon 411. Bob Lebline along with Jack Farrell here on the Fios One Star Ledger NJ.com High School Game of the Week. Two championships crowned Jack, and they were great bouts. Hank Stinson of Eastern, the 140 pound state champion now. And Taylor Walsh of Camden Catholic goes up two classes and is now the 145 pound state champ. We head to 152, and Jack, this should be a good one. Two of the best programs in the state of New Jersey represented by two newcomers to state championship action. Neither one of these gentlemen saw action and didn't place anywhere in the state tournament over the years. But uh, uh, earlier this season, Long Branch took that long ride up to high point and had a, had a uh, lead going into the last two bouts. And high point came back and ended up beating him by one. Well, both of these guys worked very hard to get into this spot today. Ethan Orr beat Rieger of Delsey 6-0 in the semifinal match, and Rieger was supposed to go on to this final. As we, When we spoke to Bob Bear, he even admitted the same thing. And Doug Cornell beat Benner out of Roselle Park 4-3 in a tiebreaker, and that was another one of those great, exciting matches. You know, everybody, it's a shame we don't have those on because all the excitement you see here is doubled on Saturday night. Well, semifinals, you and I, are, are we just love to be here. This is wonderful for us because we enjoy it, but... The Saturday night is, as Ellen John says, Saturday night's all right for fighting. <laughs> oh, it sure is. It's a beautiful thing to see. And, Jack, we have to mention that eight awards are given out, and it, I think more amazing than the winner's bracket is how they perform the loser's bracket here and come up with place winners. Well, you have to actually come down here one time, especially on a Friday night when they have eight mats on the floor. It's like a ballet. Nobody misses their turn. The organization by the NJSIA is just so impressive that it, it is like a ballet. It's missing the music, but it's like a ballet. These kids are in and out, in and out, boom, 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 reporting to the tables. The referees are on top of everything. It's just it's beautiful to watch. And not just them, we must mention. How about the officials? They bounce in and out from match to match to match. We have our first two points of the game, and they belong to high points, Ethan Orr. So Orr's takedown gives him a 2-0 lead. Well, we must also mention that when these two teams met up at High Point, 
these gentlemen did not wrestle against each other. They were wrestling on different weight classes. And people who have been around us know that when we do all those individual matches, Jack, team against team, it is wild. It is up to the minute, a second before they step on the mat that they have to tell you who's going to wrestle. Yeah, they have to declare the last possible second. It makes it makes a lot of fun, though. A lot of the coaches get to do more work that way. They get to put more strategy into the game. And to mention the coaches from uh, High Point, John Garnier, and from um, Long Branch, 10-year coach Dan George. And I would think that there's a relative of his that wrestled and didn't quite make it to this ma the bout this year. The young George gentleman who wrestled for Long Branch at one of the heavier weights. Well, that was an exciting match for all the fans last night. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get there. But first period winding down, and it's a 2 nothing lead for Ethan Orr of High Point as he tries to get his team's first state championship of the match. And, Jack, a lot of the good teams, the teams that are in that top five, top ten, are very well represented this year. Well, High Point has two in the finals. Uh, Willingboro has two. Paulsboro has two. South Plainfield has two. And Long Branch has two. And you probably found your top ten right there <laughs> in what's happening. Second period underway now, and you see in the red, Ethan Orr on top of Doug Connell in the green for Long Branch. Orr a junior, Connell a senior, so the Long Branch senior, his last opportunity to get that elusive to state title. And, Jack, most people don't know, you wrestle all season to try to just finish in the top three in the regions to get an invitation down here. And we talk to a lot of parents throughout the weekend and so many proud parents just to the fact that their son will have a chance to experience this exactly it's great for the kids it's great for the parents i mean they 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 work as hard rooting in the stands as the kid does on a mat sometimes the escape makes it a 2-1 match connell got cornell got out and cornell was able to pick up his first point of the match well you know bob this is an individual tournament but you know these two guys in the back of our mind, are wrestling as if it were Long Branch against High Point. Right, to get even for that loss. Exactly. <laughs> and again, you see 110 to go, 2-1. to one. Ethan Orr on top of Doug Cornell. We are at 152 pounds here and live from Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. And for anybody watching it later on on Files, it will be a little bit delayed on Files, but we are live right here on NJ.com. You know, it, it, this place is packed. I don't know if there's an empty seat in the place, but when, there, when it's like this and it's just getting going, it's so quiet in here. But then once once the action gets hot and heavy, these fans go wild. And you'd be, I was walking around talking to a lot of people today and stuff. You'd be surprised how many fans here don't have anybody that's wrestling. They're just wrestling fans and they're down to see. Well, somebody asked me today, what, what does it exactly do? And again, Ethan Orr leads Cornell by a score of 2-1 to one here as we approach the last 30 seconds of period number two. But, Jack, there's wrestling clubs that are here with all the junior kids. Everybody wants a chance to see what this is and possibly look for something that may well be their future. You're right, Bob. I was, I was really impressed with the number of, of real young youngsters that were here today, this weekend. And again, these kids not only represent schools, Jack, a lot of them represent clubs and, and they represent a lot of the kids in their community. And, and some of these youngsters actually work with the young kids during their free time, during their wrestling seasons. We got a, a lot of the uh, grammar school kids wrestling at the same clubs, at, you know, of course, different level than high school kids. But they get to see them. They get to talk to them. They get to try to emulate some of their moves and things like that. Two periods in the book or still leads it by one. Two minutes to go here. State championship bout at 152 pounds. And he's going to let Orr up, and he's going to let himself go down 3-1, to one, Jack. And maybe you could explain to the folks that might not know it as Ethan Orr gets the free point, and it's 3-1, why he allowed that to happen, Cornell. Well, he did it for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you let him up now, it's on 3-1. to one. If you take him down, you tie it, which is what he's looking for. And he but gave, if, but gave if it he, his best I, shot right there. I, I'm sorry, but if, he, he, uh, if you have him down, you start in down position, and he reverses you. Then you're in trouble. And he almost has what he wants here. If he can get his body in position, he's going to pick up two. Right now, Orr is just holding on for dear life. <laughs> it's one of those situations you just don't know how strong you are until you see the chance to lose and staring you right in.